Welcome back boys and girls. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about uh, perhaps the only thing that is useful that you should know about threads. Threads in the, the .NET world is not something that we use. We use tasks, asynchronous tasks. They are everywhere. Perhaps the only thing that we know about asynchronous tasks is that uh, threads run them. And the whole notion of threads is actually unknown to us. In this video, I'm going to try to shed some light on how threads are executing the tasks and hopefully paint a better picture for you to imagine this whole scenario when, okay, I am creating a bunch of tasks on this computer. Uh, how are they all going to get processed eventually? Okay, so if you're enjoying the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. Don't forget to check out the description. Let's go ahead and get started. So here we have a super simple application. And as you will notice, by popular demand back for a limited amount of time, we have dark mode, all right? Uh, we have the total string over here. We're gonna infinitely loop over this and we are going to accumulate the string here. Okay, super simple application. And the reason I'm actually, you will see the layout is different I'm on a Windows machine. The reason I'm using it is because it's a little bit easier to see uh, the CPU, okay? So if I run the application, hopefully it should come as no surprise that there is no air gap in this application. It's just do the work and there is no stopping on doing the work. So the computer is going to do the work. You can see the CPUs, different CPUs are peaking to 100%. Uh, so this is called context switching, if you weren't aware. Uh, the thread, which is executing the application, you can think of it like a cog, which is spinning. It's, uh, it doesn't spin on its own. The processor is the thing that is actually spinning and the thread has to be placed on the processor to get spun. Now, your application is not the only application that is running on your computer and you have tons of applications. All of them have their own threads. The Operating system is managing all of these threads and it's saying, okay, you thread, you run on this CPU for a little bit of, uh, for a little amount of time, and then it's constantly juggling them. So there is tons of cogs and all of those cogs are getting juggled on these main gears, which are actually turning. So when you're actually thinking about this, you can discard all other applications and because your application is going to have many threads. So you can think about threads as opportunities to execute code when it's hitting the processor. Okay. Now with the silly application, let's go ahead and stop this. We're going to comment this out and we're going to bring in this example. So the example is uh, simplish we have an async number over here where we're trying to uh, effectively step in into this task asynchronous world and this is purely for demonstration purposes the both examples effectively simulate a race condition we're going to create a number of a number of tasks or a number of threads in the thread example we're creating threads in the task example we're creating tasks okay we have our semaphore, which is starting at zero. So after we created all of our threads and we have created all of our tasks, we release the semaphore, allowing those constructs to execute. So the function, which is consuming the semaphore and is waiting for it to have some kind of count that gets assigned to the thread. So the thread starts and the code will resume execution only when this is released. Okay. Same thing for the task. We have the function, we wait for the semaphore, we run it. And only after we enumerate all of the threads or all of the tasks, we release the semaphore and then we wait for both to complete. Okay. So the code is identical. The main weird bit that you may see is the lock in the middle here. Uh, this is again to effectively demonstrate blocking because the metaphor that I'm presenting over here are spinning cogs and when the cog jams effectively or isn't spinning, uh, this can effectively help you under to understand, okay, there I have my computer, it has the main spinning processes. My application has these threads which are also cogs and when they get placed on the process, they spin. And when they spin, they run code that is assigned to that thread. If you watch my async await video, I have explained that tasks, which are effectively 
cut, cut it up into chunks of a weight, a thread may enter and execute it up to the await, and then a di different thread may complete the task. So the task really consists of multiple cogs where you're saying, okay, this is the first thing that you do, the second thing, the third thing. Again, from that video, you're going to understand that a, a task is a state machine and every single state that the machine can be in and as it's transitioning from one state into another state, that is effectively one cog. So one state is one cog. And when we place that one cog onto the thread, it is going to run that state and transition to the next one. And when the next state is ready to be run, the thread pull is the thing which is taking that task cog and places it on top of the thread to run. Let's come back to the program over here. And first of all, we're supplying 32. So this is the amount of uh, processes that I have. I'm going to .NET run. And running this application, it's going to complete relatively fast from both sides. Now, just doubling the number to 64 for both of these, we're going to see that the thread one is going to complete very fast and the task one is going to get some time. And depending on how lucky or unlucky you get, it is either going to complete faster or it's going to complete longer. So again, the notion that once you take the task and when you create it, you send it to the thread pool. It is not actually running yet. The thread pool has to take that task and put it on top of a thread. When you create 64 threads, you're actually creating 64 cogs, which the CPU can juggle on top of the processes. At this point, you can effectively have a better guarantee that the CPU is going to go through all of the cogs and give them all a spin. And again, keep in mind, the CPU is juggling the threads, okay? When we are creating a task, the thread pool is going to take that task and really the first state to advance. So for example, in this example, the first state would be over here. We reached the await async over here. We've reached the first state. So this would be one, two, three. One task is three cogs. It will take the first cog, place it on the thread. It would reach the first state. And because the state machine looks like executing a function, it would effectively finish executing this part of the function. And then it go, can try go execute another part of a different function that perhaps doesn't belong to this task. So anyway, it spins the first cog over here. And then it is going to try to spin this second cog. Because this is a blocking operation, as the thread is sitting on top of a process and it's trying to spin, you have to understand that the task that has been attached to the thread is the thing that is jammed due to this lock. So the task is blocked by the lock. In turn, that blocks the execution of the thread. So the time that it is actually spending on the CPU trying to turn, it stops the process. So the process is trying to execute the thread, but there is nothing to execute there. So you are wasting CPU time that way. Now that we know that the task is the thing that is causing the thread to jam, once it has actually reached this lock, uh, let's think about it this way. We have only two tasks. The first one, and they, they all start at the same time. The first one will reach the lock and it will pass through. The second one will block. Effectively, anytime the thread that is going to run that task is just going to hang. It's not going to do anything. The second thread that is going to run that is going to reach the second state. And because in between here and here, it's the second state of the state machine. So it's a cog that has been placed onto the thread. It has finished running. So to get from here to here, to, uh, from the get results to the end of the function, a third cog has to be spun. Now, because this thread is actually free, it can pick up that third cog, finish it, finish this function, exit the lock, and then once the other thread is executed, it can finish this function as well. Now, let's say, and this is going to be important to understand that in the thread example, we're creating 64 threads. In the task example, we're creating 64 tasks. 
the thread pool is the thing that decides how many underlying threads there is going to be to service all of these tasks. So the constraints that I'm going to put in this example is we only have two threads, but we're going to have three tasks that are going to execute this function. From here to here, we have three cogs, one for each task that has been given to two of the threads. All of the tasks are on the same state on this line. We then want to go further Can take two cogs, place it on the two threads, and those are going to spin. So we're going to get from uh, this part to this part. The first uh, thread is going to go through. The second one is going to block. Okay. So because the second one is blocking, it cannot actually pick up another task. We are down to one thread to complete this execution. Be the thread that has passed, it has reached this point over here. And again, remember that from here to here is the second cog. So it has finished the second cog of uh, the first task that has managed to go through the lock. It is then free to pick up the ne next task. What are the next tasks? Well, it can be the remaining part here. But however, because this task is not yet ready to be executed because it has task delays in there, uh, well, we're, it's, uh, we're, we're executing tasks. While we're blocked by IO over here, we can actually start doing work over there. So the second thread is going to pick up the second cog from the third task. Okay, so we have to travel from here to here. And as you can imagine, it's going to reach this lock because for the task which actually entered the lock statement, it didn't uh, exit the lock statement. So now we're in a situation where two threads are actually blocked at the lock statement and our application will effectively be deadlocked here and not be able to advance because both of the tasks that is trying to run are blocked here. We only have two threads. That's it. Uh, game over. You have to restart. Now, the underlying thread pool, when you're scheduling tasks, you don't know how many threads it's going to create. It may create the optimal amount, maybe a little bit less than is required. So maybe you have 32 processes, it's just going to create eight threads, maybe four, maybe 32, maybe 60 threads. You really don't know. The reason the task example is actually taking a little bit longer is because we're experiencing thread starvation. A lot of the tasks which are getting placed on the pool of threads that we have those threads are getting blocked at the lock statement, relying on the only free threads that we have to try to process the other tasks. And as the number of tasks that can potentially block grows or overshadows the amount of threads that we have, that in turn drastically increases the chances of your application being deadlocked. And that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about here. Hopefully you have gotten a clear image and now not looking at the code, uh, I will try to recap it for you because what we've started from is really on one end, we talked about threads and then we weaved into tasks, but most developers are just going to be dealing with tasks. So think about it this way, as you're creating tasks, left, right, and center, you're creating sets of cogs. Whichever cogs are ready to be spun, the thread pool is going to create the appropriate amount of threads to distribute those cogs between. The CPU is the thing which is going to juggle those threads on its processes in order to execute the code or the tasks which have been assigned to those threads. If you have a blocking operation within your task, that in turn will jam and block the thread, meaning that that thread can no longer pick up any other tasks. And I didn't explicitly state this, but how the CPU context switches the thread so it can take a thread, put it on a process and take it off. The thread pool cannot do the same with tasks. Once a task is assigned to a thread, it can no longer be detached. So that's the main reason once a task is blocked, it jams the thread. And the more jammed threads that you have, the more time your CPU is effectively sitting there doing nothing, trying to spin jammed Reds. This will be it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave in the comment section. I understand that this topic can be very confusing. If you would like the source code for this video, as well as my other videos, please come support me on Patreon. I will greatly appreciate it. As always, a big and special thank you goes out to all of my current Patreon supporters. You help me make these videos. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.